Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and this episode of So Remixed is about extracting motifs out of repeating patterns. So there's a lot of great resources online that you can grab free vector artwork. One of these is Vectezy.com, where I grab this floral repeat. Now this pattern is in a repeat as a swatch, and that's great for some purposes. But for today's demo, I actually want to work with the individual floral motifs that are inside of it. So I'm going to show you how you can extract those and use them on your own as individual motifs as opposed to a repeating pattern. So I've got a tank top over here that I'm ultimately going to put a placed print on using these flowers. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I open my swatches panel and I've got the pattern swatch in here that makes up the floral repeat over here. So it's as simple as taking that from the swatches panel and dragging and dropping it onto your artboard. That'll give me access to the original vector artwork that was used to create that pattern swatch. So from here, I'm just going to ungroup it. Object, ungroup. And that'll allow me to access the individual flowers. Now, depending on how the repeating pattern was made, there might also be a clipping mask. If that's the case, just choose object, clipping mask, it's not going to let me because there's not one so I'll just show you really fast. You would select it and you would choose object clipping mask release. So if you're fighting with the pattern it might be a matter of ungrouping and or releasing a clipping mask. So from here I've got my individual flowers. Now they're not individually grouped which is perhaps not ideal but that's all right we'll work around it. So what I do with my direct selection tool I want this flower here so I'm going to select that I don't want that dot, I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over to the side because I know I want that as one individual motif. I also want this flower here, so again I'm going to select that artwork. And I don't want this dot, so I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to move this over. And I want a couple small flowers to work with as well. So I want this green one, pink one, and a fuchsia one. So I think that's a pretty good start, so let me move those over. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to fix this petal here. Now I could try to manually fix it, but I also have five other instances of that petal that work quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to use this petal and place it right here perfectly. Now I could manually move it and rotate it, or I can also use my rotate tool. So that's on my toolbar, shortcut letter R. Now I can grab that and I can define the axis point of rotation. Now in this sort of a design, the axis point of rotation would be in the very center of the flower. So what I want to do is I want to hold Option or Alt and click in the very center of the flower with the Rotate tool. And what that's going to do is it's going to define wherever I used Option, Alt, and clicked as the center axis and it's also going to bring up the Rotate panel which allows me to specify what degree of turn I want. Now I already know I want to rotate this negative 60 degrees and the reason is because there's six petals and it a full circle is 360, so 360 divided by 6 is 60. Now had I rotated it positive 60, it would have rotated to the left. So if you're not sure negative or positive, that's fine. Just make sure you have your preview on and you'll get a preview of what you're going to get. Now I want to not only hit OK, but I want to copy this because that's going to take the motif I had started with and also leave that one there as well as create a copy that's rotated. So I copy that. So now that flower is completed, I'm going to select it all and I'm going to group, command or control G or object group. And I'm going to move down and I like these little dots here so I'm going to put a few more to make it symmetrical. And I'm going to select these and command or control G and I'm going to select these small ones with their little dot centers and grouping each of those. So now I'm going to delete this artwork that I don't need. I'm going to take my flowers and move them over here and zoom in a little closer on my tank top. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale these down a little bit smaller. So I just hold shift using my selection tool and I can scale these down. I'm going to start placing them on my tank top where I think that they should go. I'm not going to spend a ton of time getting this totally perfect. You might want to spend a little bit more time on yours. But just to give you the general idea, make that guy a little smaller, move another one in here and then we'll fill in with some small flowers. Now you might notice that I'm getting some copies of the motifs without really doing anything. The way I'm doing that is with a keyboard shortcut. It's the Option or Alt key and what I do is with that, with the selection tool I just hold Option or Alt and as I click and drag on a motif it automatically makes a copy for me. So this is a really really fast um, trick that you can use to very quickly 
make multiple copies of motifs or shapes in your artwork. So that's looking pretty decent to start. And from there, what I want to do is I want to cut out the edges here, but I don't actually want to crop them off because what if I later decide I want to move this a little bit further in? I don't want to sacrifice the artwork and actually cut it. So what I want to do is use a clipping mask. And I've got that started over here. So this is essentially just another front panel of the tank top that I want to use as a clipping mask. I'm first going to group my flowers here. Now my tank top underneath was already grouped so if I just select everything and then hold shift I can deselect the tank top underneath. So I group all these flowers so I've got them all as one group. And I take this tank top shape that matches the front panel of the tank top and I want to use that as a clipping mask as I said. So I'm going to line that with the right side of this current tank top so that they're directly stacked on top of each other. So I just choose a line, horizontal align. Now the shape that's used as the clipping mask, which is ultimately going to mask out the edges of the floral motifs, has to be in the very front. So I want to choose Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Now I select that tank top as well as the floral motif group and I choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now I've got that and essentially it is a shape that's masking out the flowers. Now the great thing, as I said earlier, I'm not actually cutting the edges of the flowers off. So if I decide later that I want to move or manipulate some of the artwork, I can just double click to get inside, which is essentially accessing the artwork via isolation mode. I'm going to click one more time to get inside of the group. And I can then change or move this artwork around as I like. So that's the advantage of doing a clipping mask as opposed to using a Pathfinder tool and actually cutting the edges of the artwork. So from there my tank top looks pretty good but I feel like the print's a little bit heavy and I want to add a grunge texture to it to add some dimension. So I've also downloaded this texture from Vectezi as well and I'm going to use this to add some dimension to my print. So I'm going to grab this texture here, I'm just copying it, paste it over into this file. I'm going to zoom in. Now the texture as a whole, some of the parts are a little bit heavy for my liking and I just kind of want to get some of these small little bits and pieces. So I'm going to zoom in. Now I can use the direct selection tool to select individual shapes, but instead I'm going to use the lasso tool. Now if you've worked in Photoshop, there's a tool that works kind of similarly. And it's great because what it does is it allows you to just click and drag and manually sort of lasso around individual shapes that you want to select. It doesn't matter if things are grouped or part of a mask or anything, you can just individually select some shapes really quickly as opposed to the direct selection tool which would ultimately force you to select some type of rectangular portion of shapes. So I'm going to copy that, paste it down here. Now I want this to be white because the ground of my tank top is white and that's what I want the texture to just show through to the ground. So I'll open my swatches and I don't have a white swatch so that's fine. I'll just grab it from the bottom of my toolbar here. So I've made that white. And from here I'm in Illustrator CC. Uh, if you're in CC or CS6 you can use the pattern making tool. So we choose Object, Pattern, Make. If you're in CS5 or earlier, you'll have to do that manually. I have some tutorials on that. I'm not going to go into it right now. So from here, I first want to change the size of my repeat. Um, actually, I'm going to change it to a half drop first. So I'm going to change it right there to a half drop. And I'm just going to squeeze the repeat size in a little bit tighter. So I grab my pattern tile tool. And sometimes mine gets stuck when I click and drag on the edges here. So I'm just going to come into the width. I'm going to manually adjust that I'm using my down arrow to sort of squeeze the texture pattern in a little bit tighter. And we will make the height a little bit shorter as well. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to click down up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the clipping mask and I'm going to double click so I'm inside of the mask. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool to just make a rectangular shape that extends over the floor, all the floral artwork. Now instead of that having a white fill, I want it to have the grunge texture fill, which is right here, the new pattern swatch that I just made. So I click that. Now it looks decent, but I think that the texture is a little bit big. So I'm going to show you how to scale that. I can select that and I can choose Object, Transform, Scale. And if I take the Transform Objects off and just have the Transform Patterns on, let's see here. 
Um, sometimes it doesn't catch on the first time. So I'm just going to say OK, and I'm going to choose Object, Transform, Scale. And why aren't you catching? I sometimes fight with this. OK, I'm going to deselect, reselect that, Object, Transform, Scale. And now it seems to be working. I don't know why, sometimes it doesn't always work. So you can see it can manipulate the size of the texture very easily. I'm going to cancel out of that because I want to show you a different way to do it that's a little bit more efficient. Using the scale tool on your toolbar here, shortcut letter S, I can have that artwork selected and I have to hold the tilde key on my keyboard which is the squiggly line to the left of the one on your keyboard. So I hold the tilde key and I can then scale my artwork and only the pattern fill will scale in this instance the grunge texture that we've got. Now if I hold the tilde and the shift key it'll scale proportionally. Fighting with this one a little bit it's kind of jumping around on me. Um, but it's a great way to quickly scale artwork as opposed to having to use the drop down menu here. So from here, I'm done editing, and I can either hit Escape or double click to get outside of isolation mode, which I'm inside my clipping mask right now. So double click, double click anywhere there's not artwork. And now I've got a nice texture on my floral print that's adding a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to delete all of this. And you can see I've got a really cute coordinating top that maybe is going to coordinate back to a printed bottom or something like that. So. Again, access some of the resources that you've got online and at your fingertips for free downloads and then take them and manipulate them into something that's your own. You don't always have to work from scratch and create things 100% on your own. Um, there's a lot of great resources out there to kind of get you going and get you familiar with the tools and resources within Illustrator. Thanks for watching. This is So Heidi.